Motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. Motion and a second for approval of minutes from our previous meeting. Are there any additions or subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as stated signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. And actually, we have to back up because I forgot to call roll. And we can do that right now. We'll start with Alderman Bauman. Here. Alderman Berg. Here. Alderman Bonet. Here. Alderman Doyle is excused. Alderman Graf. Here. Alderman Manny. Here. Alderman Montemayor. Here. Alderman Moody. Here. Alderman Perez. Here. Alderman Reinfleisch. Here. Alderman Stefan is excused. Alderman Van Akron. Here. Alderman Vander Here. Alderman Wangaman is excused. And Alderman Weininger. Here. We have a quorum. On that, the first item on our agenda tonight is Blue Harbor a status report. The presentation will be by Paulette Enders, Director of Planning and Development, and Steve Sokolowski, City Planner, regarding the pre precise implementation plan for the Blue Harbor Resort. What I have on that is just a brief opening comment. I'd like to welcome everybody for attending this evening. Tonight's meeting was called to provide the Common Council with the latest information and status of the South Pier District development, specifically the Blue Harbor Resort. It is hoped that through informational meetings such as this, the Common Council will better be informed and also be able to make better decisions and better, table, better able to answer questions from their constituents. Paul Enders, our Director of Planning and Development, along with Steve Sokolowski, our City Planner, will tell us about the precise implementation plan and what it entails. When they are finished, the council will be able to ask questions pertaining to the plan. After the question period, we'll hear from our city attorney, Steve McLean, regarding the status of our contract with Great Lakes, the developer of the Blue Harbor Resort. On that, Paulette, you are ready. Okay. Is that working? There you go. I don't know. Is that working? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What I'm going to start, I don't know if it is working, but what I'm going to start off by um, saying is that, um, as Mike Werner mentioned, Steve Sokolowski and I will be giving an update on the planning process that the city's been going through as well as Great Lakes. And several weeks ago at the plan commission meeting, Great Lakes was approved as far as the, the planned unit development process, which included a general development plan and a precise implementation plan. And then after Steve Sokolowski gives that update, then what I'll do is I'll tell you, um, give you a little bit of information on where the city's at as far as the work that we've been doing with Smith Group JJR on the master plan for South Pier. So I'll turn it over to Steve. Thanks. Good evening. Are we gonna get it in here? All right, as everyone knows, we've been working hard, many of us, on this uh, uh, development with Great Lakes. And recently, they did go through the plan unit development as far as actually getting uh, an, an approval to construct the project that's been described to everyone. Um, you do, on your packet, did, packets did receive a copy of the precise implementation plan that you can have before you, as well as a copy of the table of contents that shows some elevations, shows floor plans, showed some uh, guidelines that you can all take a look at and ask any questions whenever you feel. 
Um, pretty much, uh, just so everyone understands, the South Pier right now is zoned pre-planned unit development, and that really doesn't allow for any types of formal uses until an applicant comes in and makes an application to do some development on the island itself. At that point in time, what a person will do is come in for a pre-application uh, pre conference. We'll speak to them, we'll get their ideas, see what type of uh, process is going to be involved, let them know that here's, you're at step A and here's how you get to step Z. Um, the first step was basically that the plan commission initiated the PUD process. They approved, they initiated the PUD process on January 28th of this year, um, and they also approved the, uh, the pre-application conference as well as just the concept plan. Just the, at that point in time, things were just like, here's what we think we're doing. They gave us some information, we started, got the ball rolling. Then the next step was called the general development plan, and that was one of the land use processes that came before the council in terms of actually changing the zoning from pre-planned unit development to actually, um, uh, it's called Plan South Pier PUD 2003-1. So at that point in time, what we did was we took it to the plan commission. It was still in a conceptual general development type stage, but at that point in time, what you're doing is you're rezoning the property from pre-planned unit development to the actual zoning that allows for the development to occur. The fourth step is what you have before you this evening, which was called the Precise Implementation Plan, which was recently approved by the Plan Commission on June 3rd um, of, of, well, last week. And, uh, and so there were some things, um, I think our initial Precise Implementation Plan hearing was on May 27th. And there were a couple of items that had not been addressed. I'm sure many of you heard the aspect that it wasn't in color. And it wasn't in color, and that was one of the issues. But there were other issues, such as landscaping, parking, signage. There were more issues than just the, the drawings being in color. And, but that being said, that was one of the things that did need to come in. On June 3rd, a lot of that information did come in. You have the plan that's before you this evening. That is the plan that was approved along with the drawings and um, that's where we sit this evening. And if anyone has anything specific out of the plan itself, I'd be more, to ha more than happy to answer any questions with regards to that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you explain, I, I, I don't quite get, has there been any major change at all in, in the, in the or is it just minor changes? In terms of the actual complex itself? Yes. yes. In terms of the actual complex itself, there haven't been many changes from the general development plan, which we've seen you know, throughout the process. I'd say probably one of the biggest things that occurred was maybe the aspect that there are going to be some uh, water slides that are going to extend out onto the east side of the facility looking towards the lake, um, actually protruding the wall and going out of the facility, um, supposed to provide the uh, uh, person in the water slide a little bit of a, uh, more enjoyment or whatever you'd like to say, but it also attracts people and let people know what's happening in that section of the building. But that's probably the major change, if any. Thank you. Steve, thank you very much. Call it. Um, and as I explained before, what you what we're going to talk about two things would be the Great Lake approval process, and then also what the city's been going through on the master planning process. I think what many of you are aware of is the the concept plan for South Pier, that hasn't changed, and the companion to that that we've been working on are the guidelines, and these have been kind of. Um, I think there was a draft that was presented. They were changed, not substantially, but they were tweaked here and there. And so this is the final document that you have in front of you. Um, we'll be having this printed up, but we thought we would get this out to the council before we do that. So as you go through it, you'll see that in the beginning we have the design principles that were worked on when we worked on the concept plan. The character zones that talk about the riverfront area the family resort area, which would be the Great Lakes project area. 
and then also the lakefront. And then we go through the design guidelines and talk about each one of those character zones. And the riverfront zone would include um, the shanties. And then we get into the architectural character of the shanties, how we would treat those as far as building materials and the building edge condition. We get into building signage, surface parking areas, service areas, landscape standards, and then those go in public realm enhancements. And that gets carried through the entire document for each one of the character zones. So we go through the same thing for that, the live work zone, which would be kind of that interior area, which would include the lofts. And then we continue on to the family resort area, which would be called the dunes. And then we end with the lakefront zone or the beach area. We also have some, I think towards the end, we talk about the review process that other applicants would go through, just like Great Lakes did, so that once we start moving on and marketing the remainder of the peninsula, this will be a good tool for them to use. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. On that, uh, hearing being no further questions from the council, we'll proceed to uh, item number four, which is an update by City Attorney Steve McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, to preface my remarks, uh, I and my assistant were out at the uh, attending the Municipal Attorneys Institute uh, put on by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities in Green Lake last week from Wednesday through Friday. So uh, <clears throat> I had to do some uh, catching up today as well, <clears throat> but uh, made some pretty good progress. And uh, <clears throat> I'll try to give you the best I can where we are uh, on the status of documents and agreements and uh, kind of where we're going. Um, it's my understanding we received uh, a copy of a financing commitment uh, from Great Lakes Lender to Great Lakes late last week. Um, there are a number of contingencies in there, just as there are a number of contingencies in our development agreement that. Um, which, which means that uh, while it's a financing commitment from a lender, uh, there's still a lot of hoops that Great Lakes has to jump through before they can actually get the loan, but at least they've been spelled out and uh, basically agreed to. There are a couple of r relatively minor items in there that uh, relate to the city and the city's relationship to the lender that uh, still have to be worked out with the lender, but uh, we're hopeful those can be worked out in the next couple of days. Um, the developer is also working on uh, a public equity offering for, uh, uh, for part of its equity for the project that's in the works. Um, that'll take some time to actually sell those equity interests, but uh, they're in the process of uh, working on the sales documents, as I understand it. Uh, on tonight's council agenda, there are a number of draft documents that are the sub-documents to the development agreement that we've talked about over the months, the Convention Center operating lease, the resort ground lease, the condominium ground lease. There's a uh, restrictive covenants and cross easements agreement and a reimbursement agreement. Um, those are being submitted tonight just to, to get them in as council documents. Uh, it's, it's our hope that we'll be acting on those or, or have them presented for action by the council in the near future. Um, Exactly when is 
not firmly established yet. Uh, I guess the best date we've got currently is uh, a closing for June 30th. Um, how realistic that is, I'm not sure. Um, but that's the date we're using right now. And that June 30th date for the closing would mean that the council would need to act and the redevelopment authority would need to act on these documents prior to June, June 30th. And that's, that's two Mondays from now. So uh, we're not sure when we'll schedule a special council meeting or if we will before then. Uh, but it's possible that one will be set. It could be next Monday. I guess uh, uh, we were hoping to get some idea of a better date this, late this afternoon, but I really don't have a better date for you. But uh, fairly soon down the road, there will be uh, on the council for, for action uh, final versions of these various documents. Now there's another document that goes along with this, the intercreditor agreement between us and the developer's lender that the developer's lender is preparing that we, don't, we haven't seen yet, so uh, that isn't in the packet with the documents that are being submitted tonight. Uh, one issue that came up uh, late last week, and uh, we've placed it on the agenda for tonight's council meeting also, and uh, I think I could hand it out for discussion with the committee of the whole here so you get some idea of it and just for informational purposes uh, is a request by the developer to get on the site prior to closing, prior to actually uh, signing all the documents and uh, getting the loan monies and, and so forth. I should say this is in draft form, but I'll, I'll go through it a little bit. Without reading the whole thing, uh, what this is, is uh, if it were executed by both the city and the redevelopment authority, be permission for uh, Great Lakes and their contractor to uh, move on to the site, not necessarily to start construction, but to uh, do some preliminary work, do some staking, uh, mobilize their trailers uh, and perhaps start uh, moving some of the fill dirt that's on the south pier over to the site. Uh, that work's going to be needing to be done uh, regardless of this, whether this project goes through or not. Um, but the developer is basically asking the city to give it permission to go on site prior to uh, finalizing all the documents. Uh, the, the last two pages are some dialogue back and forth. Actually, it's just uh, one-sided, but it's in reference to comments by Great Lakes on some of the provisions in this draft that uh, uh, at least at this point, the staff uh, and our outside counsel are recommending we make changes to. Uh, basically, we're going to recommend making the changes that they request in the, uh, on the last page, but also a couple others that aren't in the document yet. One would be uh, a cutoff date for this permission 
to be June 30th so that uh, the permission would end there if nothing else happened, if there weren't, weren't any extensions or if there weren't approval of the development agreement so that we couldn't have a total just open-ended thing that they'd keep staying on the site without a uh, finalized development agreement. Uh, and we're also requesting, uh, it's, it is in here, a uh, certificate of insurance, which we have not received yet, but uh, the developer says that they're, they'll be willing to provide. Uh, the, the early start agreement basically doesn't obligate the city or the redevelopment authority to anything. Uh, it says that uh, we tell the developer that the agreement isn't final. If it doesn't become final for whatever reason, um, your people on site aren't getting any money from the city, so they've got to know that and uh, you'd have to get off the site and what's ever left there is there and uh, there'd be no obligation on the part of the city or the redevelopment authority to go forward. Um, it's hoped at the council meeting following this that, uh, or at least the request will be for the council to authorize the mayor to execute this letter as, as amended um, and we're We've scheduled a redevelopment authority meeting for tomorrow afternoon to have the redevelopment authority act on this as well. If you recall, the, uh, the whole 40-acre parcel is owned by the redevelopment authority as opposed to the city. The city doesn't own the land, but the uh, city controls the purse strings and has a lot to say as, as far as the development proceeding. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. Uh, I apologize to Alderman Benet that the document that's on the council agenda, I brought it in under his name without talking to him in advance, but I brought it in under his name because he's the aldermanic representative on the redevelopment authority. And uh, we had kind of a short time frame to get this document in for the council tonight. Uh, the, the document that is on the council agenda is uh, on the amended portion of the agenda. It's document 6-66. When, uh, when we get to the council meeting. Steve, uh, I would, if I could, I had one question. Is that pretty typical to do something like that, allow them to get on the property ahead of time? It seems to me we've done that somewhere in the past for another project. Uh, um, I don't recall exactly which one it was. There are other projects that aren't nearly as big as this where we've done it on a more informal basis. I think uh, there may have been one where, uh, well, there, there are a number where uh, like in the industrial park, in the business park where the developer started uh, digging, excavating for the foundations or something before uh, something's been finalized. So uh, it's not unprecedented that we agree to some early start. This uh, obviously is a bigger project. There's more at stake. You know, if uh, they start on the site and for whatever reason, the the development agreement uh, doesn't get executed. Um, so this, this is a little more formal letter um, that provides more uh, definition to what's going on and the relationship of the parties so that there's no misunderstandings uh, once they're on the site that, that they have some impression that they're there to stay and they have the right to be there. Uh, that's about all I can think of as far as update. As far as the development agreement itself, that's still, uh, I, I haven't, I didn't uh, download it on my email today uh, yet when I got back, but there's a version 17 that's on my, uh, on my computer. I, I'm trying to think which version it was that the council last acted on. It seems to me it's version 14. So there have been some minor changes. Uh, I really haven't looked at the latest changes. I've had some discussions on some of them. I think they're fairly minor, non-substantive. We're down to uh, really fine tuning or tweaking the, the basic document that really hasn't changed substantially. Um, 
with one bit of good news, as I understand the commitment letter from the developer, from the, the lender, is for uh, $29,500,000, when uh, originally they were talking about loaning the developer $28 million. So, uh, and it's my understanding that it's higher than that because the, uh, uh, the offering by the lender was pretty well received with their, uh, with their clientele, uh, their customers. So they were able to uh, borrow more money for the project. And uh, that's an indication that I guess they feel that the project is worthy enough to lend more money than they originally anticipated. So that's, that's positive. Uh, we'll try to keep you, uh, you know, like I said before, we may have to schedule a special council meeting sometime between now and the 30th of June. And unfortunately, we're not in a position to say when that's going to be yet or if it will be, but uh, we'll try to do that as soon as possible. And uh, I'm sure the mayor will talk to the aldermen as far as if there's uh, problems with scheduling since we're getting into vacation schedules and things and it gets harder for big groups to uh, meet. But if you have any questions on what I've presented, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, th thank you, Steve. Uh, I guess I would say everybody try to keep the next Monday night open. That's a good possibility. So just kind of put a little mark on your calendar. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with respect to this letter here, uh, Steve, uh, we've come a long ways with this thing and pretty much winding it down. I, I, uh, I like the at risk uh, clause there and the end. The fact that we're we're asking for insurance and the, the termination date, I think, is important because it obviously can't be open-ended. They need to have some termination date, and uh, the joint and several um, liability, I think, is are, are good clauses to have there. I did have a question though with respect to the um, to the hoops that you mentioned that they're having to jump at the last minute. Do those hoops involve any additional commitments, either financially or either other uh, commitments from the city that that, that are major? No. no. How about the the uh, contingencies in the commitment letter from the lender? Right. No, they're they're basically they're similar things to uh, you know not exactly uh, uh, the same, but similar things to what we've got as far as contingencies in the development agreement. In other words, uh, the developer doesn't have to close until we provide certain documentation. Uh, for instance, uh, they have a right to look at the title and raise any issues as to the title. Uh, similarly, uh, we've got a right to look at their plans. We've got a right to look at their uh, construction budgets. And, uh, and there's quite a number of things that we've got as contingencies before we close that we haven't gotten to actually exchanging those documents yet. You know, we're still, we've still been in the process of compiling all those lists of what we'll need and things like that and uh, moving forward uh, sort of incrementally. But, uh, uh, I haven't done enough of these big projects to say, you know, what's a reasonable period of time in which to exchange all those things so that everyone is comfortable and ready to proceed. But uh, from the city standpoint, I feel it's important that we should not be rushed into it where we get a whole bunch of uh, documentation that ties into the contingencies on the 29th of June and are asked to approve it all on the 30th where we haven't had a chance to look at the things. So uh, the other, and thank you for reminding me, Alderman Perez, uh, the other item that isn't in this letter that would be attached and the developers agreed to is uh, more of an itemization as to the certain construction work that they're going to be doing during this interim period. Uh, when I read it, it talked about uh, permission to commence certain construction work and it really wasn't clear what they're contemplating doing. I think we have some idea of what they're going to be doing. As I mentioned, staking, uh, maybe moving some dirt to, to fill the area so it has some time to settle. But uh, there'll be an attachment to this in the final version that'll state more clearly what it is they're actually going to be doing in the interim period. Thank you. Mr. Right. Chairman, if, I, I know we're running out of time, but I just had one more quickly. If, if you would, in a nutshell, you mentioned public equity to sell. I'm not, I don't know what that means. That's. Uh, they're, 
they have a commitment to, pre uh, to present or come to the table with some of their own money, and they're they're raising that money. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Oh, thank you. Um, just a comment, not a question. After a cursory examination of this information, it seems pretty clear cut, pretty precise. I think it's a good job on this letter regarding permission to start construction before the closing date. Looks, to my eyes, it looks pretty good. Good. And that's a good thing. I right, thank you. That's all I have. Anyone, else? anyone? Anyone else? Hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, and that was this resolution number twenty three zero three zero four, which we already passed at our May twelfth meeting. I think it got on here by accident, uh, so we are going to just skip right over that one. And at, at that point, uh, if anyone has anything else? One minute. I just have a brief closing comment. I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance tonight. And thanks to Paulette and Steve for providing us with a greater understanding of the precise implementation plan. And I'd also like to thank Steve McLean for updating us on the status of our contract with Great Lakes TV8 and Mike Hutz for getting that set up as well. And Mayor Schramm for support in getting this information to the council and to the public. Uh, that really is the intention of these meetings. And I would mark your calendars uh, in July as we're planning another committee of the whole meeting for July 21st. At this time, it looks like that date will be on that Monday at about 6 p.m. And the information at that meeting will be presented by the Sheboygan Police Department. Uh, you'll get more information as time comes along. Again, thanks to you all. Called the sixth regular meeting of the Common Council order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Excused. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rindfleisch? Here. Stefan? Excused. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Here. 14 present. Corms present. Alderman Graf? Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move that we dispense with the reading of the um, previous uh, Common Council minutes and the same has been approved as entered on the record. Moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous Common Council be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Bonet, would you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Anthony. Public forum. Okay. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to pull two documents forward, please. One is item 642, uh, and one is uh, from other matters, 661. These are both documents that um, have to do with the Industrial Park Fund and a transfer uh, so that Donahue and Associates can start work on their new addition or their new plant uh, as soon as possible. So at this particular time, I'd ask for suspension. Second, second. <coughs> Moved and second for suspension. Are the, is there any objections for suspension? <coughs> Hearing none, proceed. 
Then I'd ask that the RO be accepted and filed and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Moved and seconded that the RO be accepted and filed and the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Everyone, I don't know if everyone knows, uh, Donahue will be building a new building out in our industrial park, which is very good for our city, and I thank you, Larry, for that. Uh, and a good partner with the city. <laughs> Pat, would you call the roll, please? Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Graf. And Your Honor, the consent agenda 6-1 through 626. I would move that all our O's be accepted and filed, mm -hmm. all our C's be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolution and pass the substitute of ordinances. Moved and seconded, all our O's be accepted and filed, our C's be accepted and adopted, resolution and substitute ordinances be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Bonnet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Rindfleisch, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Weniger, Bauman, Aye. Berg. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 627 will be referred. 628 through 641 to be referred. Six forty three, six forty four, forty five, forty six, and forty seven by Alderman Groff with a resolution authorizing the borrowing of seven million dollars providing for the insurance of sale of general obligation promissory notes, therefore in level levying a tax in connection therewith. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I would um, move that the resolutions be put upon their passage. Um, you only read what one one is. There are yeah, five. go ahead. There's five of them here. You want to mention the other four? Oh. 644, which is an initial resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed six million two six million two hundred ninety thousand, providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation securities. Uh, 645, which is a resolution authorizing the issuance and providing for the sale of two million three hundred seventy-five thousand of bond anticipation notes. Uh, 646, which is an initial resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed 12,570,000, providing for issuance and sale of general, general obligation security. And 647, which is an initial resolution authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed 15,848, providing for the issuance and sale of general, general obligation securities. I would move that all those resolutions be put upon their passage. <coughs> Moved and seconded. The resolution will be put upon their passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. We have to take a moment and sign these.
some, um, some refinancing, which it resulted in um, substantial savings of, of interest and so forth. So if you just want to mention those couple items where we refinanced. Sure. And okay. You yeah. me to pull that up. Okay. All right. I'm Carol Worth from Griffin Cubic, and uh, as uh, Alderman Graff mentioned, uh, uh, one of the borrowings that we did tonight for the $7 million uh, includes your $3 million of, of your capital improvements programs. Uh, it also includes uh, two refinancings of existing debt which have been extremely su successful. We had a state trust fund loan outstanding um, for about $2 million at an interest rate of 4.5%. So part of that $7 million was issued to refinance that state trust fund loan and as a result the city saved $177,000 of interest savings as a result of doing that refinancing. And another part of that issue was to refinance uh, what the principal remaining on your it notes done in 1996. There's about a million eight left on those on that issue. Now that is outstanding at 4.367 at this time. We refi refinanced that and saved an additional uh, $63,975. So um, out of the $7 million issue, there's about 3.8 done for refinancing, which the city saved $241,000 in interest costs by doing that refinancing. So extremely successful results for the city. Thank you, Thank you Carol. Yes. Good job. Thank you. OK, moving along. 648, will I over? 649 to when? I have to put the 630th. right now. Okay. There may be a special council meeting coming up uh, next week. I'm not sure I'm going to have what day it'll be. If it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I have to find out some of your schedules. Some of you will be out of town next week for vacation a few days. So I will be in contact with you this week and we'll set the meeting up uh, probably tomorrow. I'll be calling you just to find out what your schedule is. So, right now it'll lie over until 6.30 is still bad. 6.49 to be withdrawn. 6.50 by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Stefan, Doyle, and Bonet transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. You want to move that the resolution be put upon its passage? Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage under um, discussion. Wait a minute, wait. which one are you on? 650. No, that's that's supposed to lie over. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have it pulled, but... It would be suspended, otherwise you have to suspend. No, yeah. That's all right, we'll over. let it lie over. I don't need it, thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll let it lie over. 651 through 654 to be referred. 655. By public protection and safety, recommending denying beverage operators license 1642 based on the applicant's ineligibility for licensing. Alderman Doyle. No, no he's not here. Vanderbilt. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the RO. And uh, I would ask at this time if uh, license holder number 1642 is, is here. She is not, so I'd like to make a motion to deny license number 1642. It's been new, moved in second for denial of license number 1642. <coughs> Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Monta Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Brinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. Graf, Aye. 14 eyes. Motion carried. 656 and 657, excuse me, Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. On item number 656, mm -hmm. I would move at this time to file this uh, general ordinance. Move this second to file. Under discussion, Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason I'm asking to file it is because we've been discussing this particular item in Public Works Committee, and we've been asking that the city attorney look into extending this, if he can, uh, to other than just the vehicles under 8,000 pounds, if this is what state law allows. So needless to say, or over 8,000 pounds, my apology. And at this time, this is why I'd like to see it move to file only because we'd like to come out with a different recommendation. Okay. 
Alderman Graff. Your Honor, I'm, I'm not sure, but I believe that this came out as a result of workings in, um, in finance as well as the, the uh, city attorney's office uh, that they wanted to, to do something with this. And I thought, but of course you were gone last week, maybe you didn't get a chance to look at, at this. Or, uh, Alderman Graff, my recollection was this was drafted at your request uh, that's brought in under your name. I, I drafted it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I guess the document was being referred to finance. Couldn't this be referred to finance and then they could discuss the changes there? Is there any reason why we can't do that? I'd like you, have, to you have a motion to file right now and that takes mm -hmm. precedent. So if you can vote the motion down if you want and then refer it to finance. And send it to finance. It, it is under discussion on the motion. Why would we want to do that? Then we can take it, send it to finance, and if they want to make changes to it, I guess Alderman Bauman, is there any reason why we couldn't do that? I would totally object to it. Okay. <coughs> Hearing no other, all in favor to uh, file, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries, file. Okay, 550. We didn't say what happened to 657. 657 to be referred. Okay. I said that, but he You didn't get that far. You, you, okay. You mentioned the number, but you didn't say. 550, RO, by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations relative to the tentative agreement with the Sheboygan Professional Police Officer Association. Alderman Van Akron. Connor, can we also take 565, 551, 550, 566, 552, and 567? If you'd like to, sir. I move that uh, all the ROs be filed and uh, all three resolutions be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed in the resolutions for the uh, professional police officers. Union asked me what one 1564. A couple asked me 1564 agreements. Um, firefighters, IAFF, local 483. That should do it, right? Yep. Now, I, uh, I want to make an amendment on the three resolutions. On all three contracts, I'd like to add a 2.5% employee's premium share, effective 6103 for all three contracts. Excuse me. I was under the impression, because we don't have any of the um, terms in the resolution, that the terms are in the RO, that you want, would ma want to amend the RO, just to explain what the... The ROs you want to amend is of the resolutions? Because we don't have any terms in the resolutions. Uh, this, this is what... Okay. So you want to... What was the amendment then? Uh, a 2.5 employees premium share. Effective 6103 for all three contracts. Right. Okay. That's not showing up in, in any of the contracts. Right. Okay. We have a. Um, go ahead. Just to clarify, I believe, uh, Alderman Van Akron, that that's to clarify the language in the ROs that sets forth the tentative agreements that talks about the 2.5% employee premium share. This, this is to clarify the starting date, I, I believe. Right. There's no need in there. Correct, Ted? Correct. Okay. It's independent of the Okay, we have an amendment before us. First, we've got to vote on amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, proceed. I move that all three resolutions be put upon its passage. As amended. As amended. Not our rules amended. Our rules. <laughs> And there is one. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Manda Mayer. Aye. Oh, excuse me. I heard Alderman that. Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Before we vote, uh, I'd like to offer a few comments because as I look at the contracts and appreciate all the work that goes into them and respect the numbers that are there given a normal economic climate. Um, Today I have problems with these because of the economic climate that we're in and the cut in the shared revenue. Uh, if we pass these, 
I believe that we'll look at a situation where individual employees will be terminated as one viable approach to watching our budget and balancing it. It's either that or tax increases of some significance that are quite possible. Uh, I simply would like to state my perspective on the whole issue and suggest that a broader way of looking at, at some of this might be to uh, take a lead ourselves and to take lesser salaries across the board in the city. From department's head, from mayors, possibly cuts in older people's salaries. So that employees and unions also taking lower increases than here printed would not feel duly um, discriminated against. So I would prefer an approach like that. This is throwing a monkey wrench into the whole thing. I simply state this would be my preference in one way to address the situation that we're facing today. Thank you. You're welcome. If there's no other discussion, <clears throat> Pat, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. No. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carried. 583, by Alderman Gross, Stefan Doyle, Boney, authorizing transfer, transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman Groff. And I'll move that the resolution be put upon his passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon his passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg, Bonet, Graf, Manny, Aye. Mount Mike Mayor. Aye. 14 eyes. Motion <laughs> carry. It's a mouthful. 460. Public Works recommending entering into a contract for the South Pier District Riverfront Promenade. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that we accept and file the report of committee and pass the attached resolution. Second. Move to second to accept and adopt the RC and pass the resolution. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderbilt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Groff. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Moody. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 658 will go to finance. 659 will go to Public Works. 660, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to uh, have Ordinance 660 lie over. You don't need a motion for that. It's on the it's agenda for lying over. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't? It doesn't say on there, no. Oh, okay. we forgot That's to put it. Okay. It'll lie over. <laughs> That's okay. right. It's another matter. That's why it does, it's not on there. Okay. Just Thank you. There. It'll lie over. That's right. It's other 661, along with 642, a resolution by Alderman Groff. We did that. I did that. Okay. Steve? Um, they're printed, so he doesn't have to read them? Yeah, they're on the amended sheet. Okay. Oh, okay. 662 can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Groff? Moved and second to place DRO on file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 663 will go to plan. 664 will go to city plan commission. 665 will go to city plan commission. 666, resolution by Alderman Bonet authorizing granting permission on behalf of the city for the Blue Harbor project developer to commence certain construction work. Alderman Bonet. Put the resolution on <coughs> Put the resolution upon passage. Right. Moved and second a resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 667 will go to City Plan Commission. 668. 
668 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Gary Plummer requesting an encroachment into the north side of Mayflower Avenue west of North 13th Street for the purpose of maintaining an existing fence for property located at 1330 Mayflower. That will go to Planning Commission. 669 is an ordinance granting Gary Plummer his heirs science privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Mayflower Avenue for the purpose of maintaining an existing fence. That will also go to Planning Commission. Moved and second to adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?